and we are live. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel. Today I'm going to be doing my Punch Perfect preview and prediction for a British heavyweight clash this Sunday between Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley live on Sky Sports. This is a fascinating matchup and one that feels like a long time coming. Obviously we spent months last year talking about this fight. The British Boxing Board of Control ordered the British title fight between Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley and then there was just words traded back and forth. There was blame being passed. You know, even Fraser Clark, it looked like his promoters weren't letting him off the leash. You know, Eddie Hearn was going at Ben Shalom, Matchroom were going at Boxer, Dazone were going at Sky, Fraser Clark was going at Fabio Wardley, and the fight never came to fruition. And I think that's actually allowed time for this fight to become more interesting, because since those negotiations fell through, the alternative that we ended up getting was Fabio Wardley against David Adelaide over in Saudi Arabia. And that fight... I think gave people less reasons to now doubt Fabio Wardley. Going into that, many saw it as a 50-50. Some saw it as a whitewash, and that goes either way. Some people thought Adelaide would knock him out. Some people thought Wardley would beat him with ease like he did. Some people thought it'd be a close 50-50 fight. And Fabio Wardley went in there and I think gave many of us just some reassurance that he can compete in the heavyweight division. And back when they were negotiating last year, it felt like Fraser Clark was the favourite. Now heading into this weekend... Fabio Wardley looks like the favourite, and I think many people are backing Fabio Wardley to get the win. So I think that that time, whilst we look back at it and go, oh, it's annoying that it didn't happen, I think it's allowed time for the fight to become more interesting as we now have a different favourite, and we've got a little bit more proof of how good Fabio Wardley is. So I think it's benefited the fight, and to be honest with you, it's just one of those fights that had to happen at this level. I don't think, regardless of who wins this weekend... Either of them will go on to achieve big things. This isn't one of those fights where you look at it, you know, this past weekend we've seen Dalton Smith win and he calls out Adam Azeem. And maybe you look at that fight and go, you know, Dalton Smith could go on to win a world title and Azeem could get close to a world title. So maybe it happens down the road for a world title or they both win world titles. And maybe you see them going further than British and European level. With these two guys, I think that's their ceiling. So I think it's important that the fight happens now because we won't really get an opportunity to see it otherwise or down the road. So I'm glad it's happening. And for me, it's just a fascinating matchup because of the disparity in their amateur careers and their pro careers. Fraser Clark, you know, very experienced amateur, travelled all over the world, went to all the major tournaments, ended up with an Olympic medal, served a long time in the GB squad. He played back up to Anthony Joshua, played back up to Joe Joyce, was a great understudy, you know, became the captain of that team at the Tokyo Olympics, had fought so many big names in the amateurs from the likes of Tony Yoka to Joseph Parker all those years ago in the Commonwealth Games in India. You know, uh, Bakadir Zhololov, who's the best of the new crop of heavyweights. You know, he's mixed it with so many top amateurs. And even in this country, has fought Anthony Joshua, has fought Joe Joyce, has sparred many rounds with both of them. So he's got all that experience. But as a pro, hasn't really set the world alight. Hasn't looked great. Hasn't looked like he's going to go on to do much. Whereas Fabio Wardley has none of that amateur pedigree. But as a pro, looks like he can go on to something because he's got the wins and the performances and looks like he's built for the professional game more than... Uh, Fraser Clark does so I think that that makes it a really interesting fight and I think there's a lot of comparisons that can be drawn to the fight that we got a couple of years ago in Queensbury between Joe Joyce and Daniel Dubois. Joe Joyce had all that amateur experience, Dubois had amateur experience but not the highest level like Joyce did, didn't have the time in the game in the years served in the amateurs and been at the top level like Joyce had. But as a pro, Dubois was the one with the more impressive performances. Joyce had been match tougher and fought the better names up until that point. But Dubois had the more impressive finishes, the highlight reel moments, looked like the more dangerous heavyweight. And for that reason was favoured going into it. But we saw in that fight that you can be the more powerful guy, you can look the flashier, you can look better on camera. But the guy with the experience and the know-how and the will, who hasn't necessarily looked great, has been match tougher, hasn't looked great gets on top and wins the fight through that experience and that pedigree and just being a little bit cuter and a little bit smarter in the fight and having that know-how and that and that will and that craft and that's what Joe Joyce did against Daniel Dubois and could Fraser Clark do that against Fabio Wardley now it's safe to say that Fraser Clark hasn't been matched like Joe Joyce uh, was when he turned pro because Joyce didn't have much time on his on his side so they had to match him really tough straight out of the gate 
But nonetheless, Fraser Clark has that experience. And could that serve him in this fight? I think it's going to be fascinating to find out. So we'll get into it and talk about each fighter. Just to comment on uh, Fabio Wardley, first and foremost, we'll look at him as a fighter. And he's someone that just continues to impress me. And has kind of gone through phases where he impressed me, then he didn't impress me, then he's impressed me again in his most recent performance. So Fabio Wardley's career obviously came through the white collar scene and then when he turned pro Dillian White was managing him and he'd had a few gigs on a few matrim undercards and then on the first uh, installment of the fight camp series during the pandemic we saw him against Simon Valili and that was seen as a 50-50 fight Simon Valili was a top amateur had good experience more of a cruiserweight admittedly but moving up to heavyweight we thought that you know he could cause some problems for Fabio Wally because he had that experience on him like we're talking about in this matchup but he had the experience in the craft and fought the better name. So we thought he could cause some problems. And Fabio Wardley just went in there and just wiped the floor with him. And from there, I was like, okay, listen, does that mean he's going to go on to win a world title? No. Does it mean he's going to go on to win a British title? No. But at that point, I thought, okay, he's worth paying attention to at the least. You know, he's not some novelty act. He looks like he can at least fight. And then kind of from there, it didn't really kick on. You know, obviously the pandemic plays a part in that. But also opponents pulling out, them not getting the fights that they wanted, played a, uh, played a part. And then we ended up seeing a few performances that were just a little bit uninspiring, shall we say. You know, the Eric Molina fight, you view as a step up on paper. But Eric Molina, by that point, everyone knew that he was just basically a sort of diving actor that turned up to be game for a couple of rounds and then just jumped to the canvas. He actually troubled Fabio Wardley. And that's the moment where you go, don't love the matchmaking, and he struggled. Okay, that's a knock against him where I'm sort of bringing him back down to a more realistic level. Then the matchmaking, they just couldn't find the fights for him. You know, we saw the fight against Chris Healy, which looked like they just, you know, picked someone out from the crowd and gave him an opportunity. That was really annoying and frustrating because it felt like he was wasting his time. From there, it felt like Matram, you know, had a plan and a vision for him. We saw him against uh, Michael Coffey, which I think was a good matchup at the time and good matchmaking. And I actually felt that Michael Coffey was giving him some real problems, but he kept switching stances. And that ultimately opened the door for Fabio Wardley to start to land shots. I felt like if he didn't keep switching stances and stayed in one stance, he could have given him some real problems. But then he just gave... Fabio Wardley too many options and that's where he ends up getting clipped and the referee Howard Foster jumps in far too soon but nonetheless Fabio Wardley gets a win there. Off the back of that and that run where he struggled against Eric Molina, he fought Chris Healy and a load of nobodies and then struggled against Michael Coffey, he goes into the David Adelaide fight and you're sort of like mm, not 100% sure here really, because David Adelaide whilst he got very lucky against Camille Sokolowski. Can punch, he's a big guy, you know, can he at least land on Fabio Wardley? Probably. And we saw him against Nathan Gorman, Fabio Wardley, where he got hurt and he got clipped in the early round and we saw him buzzed and he can get landed on. But what we did see in that fight, that he's game and he's willing to just have it out with you. And I think that's what was most impressive. So heading into that David Adelaide fight, I liked him to win that fight for that reason. I just felt like he showed that he can dig it out in a scrap if things get nasty and I felt that he would be able to do that and then have the skill and, and be more dynamic in order to win the fight. I did feel that he'd probably box a little bit more and it maybe go to a decision but he worked David Adelaide to the point where he was just shattered and then started to land clean and just took him out and wiped him out and it was a really impressive performance. And from there, you're like, okay, I think Fabio Wardley has proven that, okay, whilst you may doubt the fact that he doesn't have this experience, whilst he may get clipped, He's a big guy and ultimately he's willing to stand and have it. And if you're going to stand and have it with a big guy like Fabio Wood, he's going to come out on top. So he's definitely grown in my estimations. He's been brought down a peg or two in the past, but I feel like now he's probably at the sort of highest ratings I can probably give him and most people probably give him as well. So that Nathan Gorman fight, there were some worrying moments, but it also showed me that even if he's not going to be great, he's going to stand there and have it with you. And if that's the case, he's got a good enough chin and good enough power to win the fight. And against David Adelaide, he showed he can run through that kind of English title level with ease. So now he's at British level and he's in against Fraser Clark, who, as we mentioned, has all that experience. So we'll talk about Fraser Clark now. When you actually look at his pro career, there's not really a great deal to talk about, to be honest. Obviously, the standout name really is Dave Allen, um, which, again, novelty act Dave Allen. A lot of people like him for his humour and his social media antics and his weigh-in antics more than his actual fighting ability. That was a weird fight where Fraser Clark had a couple of points deducted. And it kind of looked like if he's not careful here, he could lose the fight because he's getting points taken away. He could be disqualified if he gets another point taken. And it was just messy, it was ugly, and then Dave Allen pulled out with a perforated eardrum. And it wasn't a, 
a lucky win for Fraser Clark, but it was definitely an ugly fight where he did need to come on strong in the second half of it to be able to get the win. But obviously Dave Allen pulled out in the sixth round, so ultimately he gets the win. But apart from that, gone the distance with Marius Wack in a very uninspiring performance. Camille Sokolowski has gone the distance with him. And again, you may say he beat, he beat Camille Sokolowski you know, relatively well. For me, an elite prospect doesn't just beat him relatively well. They destroy Camille Sokolowski. Bakadir Zolodov, for me, is the best prospect in the heavyweight division by a country mile. And he wipes the floor with Sokolowski. And I think that shows the difference in levels between someone like a Fraser Clark and a Zolodov. But that doesn't mean he can't win at British level. And whilst we've not seen anything in his pro career that leads you to believe that he can go in there and get the win against Fabio Wardley, he does have that pedigree and that background. You do need to take it into account. We've not seen Fabio Wardley, and as we enter kind of the breakdown part of the, the video now, we've not seen Fabio Wardley dragged into a horrible fight before, and the second half of it would be really horrible for him. And whilst you may say Fraser Clark hasn't gone the 12 round distance, yeah, of course, that, that, that plays a factor. But the type of fighter that Fraser Clark is, he's a grafter, he sort of chips away, he, he kind of just keeps on going and keeps on working. And I think we saw in the Joyce vs. Dubois fight that, okay, whilst Dubois may be a little bit more explosive, as the fight progressed, it was the guy that just kept chipping away with the jab, kept staying in his face, kept being there in front of him, kept taking shots, and was just there in the second half of the fight that Dubois crumbled. And for uh, Fabio Wardley, everyone that he's hit, everyone that he's landed on, everyone that he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with has folded under that pressure and that power. Fraser Clark is a big guy that's taken big shots off big fighters, and in the amateurs, from the time that I followed him, I remember him being stopped by uh, Joe Joyce in the amateurs. I remember watching a clip in a in a, um, a uh, away training camp where he sparred back at Jololov and he got hurt quite badly. But apart from that, he has a pretty good chin, Fraser Clark, and he's a big lump that can that can take his licks. And I think Fabio Wardley is going to have a harder time getting rid of Fraser Clark than he would have had against David Adelaide, who really and truly, I think it was fatigue more than anything that he got out of there in the end because he just couldn't even stand David Adelaide, too muscle bound, throwing big shots and just didn't have the energy in him. You know, Nathan Gorman, someone that crumbles every time he gets hit, you know, clean. The Michael Coffey fight, again, early stoppage. So apart from that, you look at kind of those biggest wins for, for Fabio Wardley and it hasn't really kind of cleanly knocked someone out that you think... Okay, they had a good chin, and that's just a brutal knockout, and his power is legit. I think Fraser Clark's the first guy that if he stops him and he hurts him and gets rid of him, you can look at it and say, okay, that, that's a statement, and Fabio Wardley's power is legit. So I think for Fraser Clark, I think it's about getting through those first six rounds and not accumulating too much damage. We've seen Fabio Wardley just light people up in the first six rounds, and they ultimately can't get past that stage to take him into the part of the fight where you drag him into deep waters. So I think for Fraser Clark, it's about just early on, just using that experience and using your fundamentals. Just stick the jab in his face. Just stick the jab out there. Be really uh, fundamentally sound early on. Don't take big shots. You know, take shots on the gloves, take them on the arms, take them on the shoulders. But just, you know, keep it tight. Stay fundamentally sound throughout the first six rounds of the fight. Chug away with the jab like Joe Joyce did. You don't even have to look to land a big right hand, land a big left hook. I think a lot of people have fought Fabio Wardley and made the mistake of trying to hit him with a big shot early because we saw him troubled against Eric Molina. I think that's not the right approach against Fabio Wardley. I think Fraser Clark just needs to chip away. And then when we get into the second half of the fight, he'll have his energy. And then a quick, explosive, twitchy, dynamic athlete like Fabio Wardley will likely tire in the second half of the fight because he's the guy that would have done the majority and the bulk of the work early on. And he would have had to work hard to keep a big lump like Fraser Clark off him. And I think if it gets into the second half of the fight, that's where Fraser Clark can really start to turn it on and then can start to let the right hand go, start to let the left hook go, start to really just impose his size and his will on him. Fraser Clark, as I mentioned, is a big old lump. And I think as it gets into those middle stages in the middle of part of the fight, he needs to go full Tyson Fury and just lean, be horrible, just sink all your weight onto Fabio Wardley when you get in close. Just tire him out, make him have to carry you around the ring almost. And the speed, the twitchiness, all that sort of athleticism that Fabio Wardley brings that I think F Fraser Clark probably lacks quite significantly in will start to zap as the fight goes on. And then I think Fraser Clark will have an opportunity in the second half of the fight to really start to lump on him and start to get rid of him. And I think that's his route to victory. 
If he doesn't get that right, I think there's a world where in the first half of the fight, if he's trying to land right hands, if he's trying to do too much and trying to tire Fabio Wardley early and make a dent early, I think that's where Fabio Wardley is so good, so twitchy, so powerful that he will just continuously land clean shots. And as you get into the second half of the fight, your nose is broken, your eyes cut, your eyes swollen. You've taken so much damage that you can't turn it on in the second half of the fight because you can't see properly, you can't breathe properly. You've taken too much damage and the referee's having a look, the corner's having a look. So I think that if he gets that wrong, there is a world where we say, get it to the second half of the fight and you'll win. I think there's a world where it gets second half of the fight and he gets stopped because he's taken so much early. So there's a fine line there for, for Fraser Clark. But I think he just needs to have faith in himself. I think that's something Joe Joyce had against Dubois, was just this self-confidence that, okay, it's not right in the first six, six rounds of the fight, but it will become right when, as I get there and he invested in the game plan. I think for Fraser Clark, it has to be all about the game plan. Now, for Fabio Wardley, I would take a lot of confidence in what he's achieved in his pro career and what Fraser Clark hasn't. Fabio Wardley looks a very good athlete for a big man. He's quick, he's explosive, he's powerful, he's dynamic, he's athletic. He's got all those things in his favour. And Fraser Clark lacks all of those things. And I think that's really going to favour Fabio Wardley to win the fight comfortably if he can make it comfortable for himself. If he overworks early on, it could get to a stage in the second half of the fight where, like I said, if Clark has timed things properly and just sort of, you know, stayed afloat, that could get dodgy for him. But really and truly, I think from speaking to a few people and a few sparring bits I've seen, the likes of Richard Riakpour have given... Fraser Clark a lot of trouble in sparring, and I think Fabio Wardley, for the same reasons, will give him a lot of trouble. You know, a lot quicker, a lot twitchier than Fraser Clark. But I just think it's about taking your time. And what I liked about Wardley was his patience um, against David Adelaide. I think there's been issues in the past with his patience where he's been a little bit too gung ho. But I think we've start to see him settle down and become more relaxed. And I felt in the Adelaide build up, he looked a bit nervous at times. In this build up, I think he seems a lot more confident because he now knows he can do that. So I think that Fabio Wardley will look to go in there, take his time box and look to take uh, Fraser Clark apart and just pick him apart and eventually stop him. So in terms of my actual prediction, how I see it going, again, kind of going back to that Joyce Dubois fight where I think a lot of us got burned, but a lot of our beliefs and stuff came to fruition in that fight as well. I think I'll go back to that and that's maybe influencing my decision and making a little bit. But when I strip that way and just look at this fight individually, I think Fabio Wardley, just because he doesn't have that amateur experience, doesn't mean he can't win this fight easily. I think there's a difference between being a good amateur and a good pro. I think we saw it this past weekend with Ishmael Davis and Troy Williamson. Troy Williamson had tons of amateur experience, and Ishmael Davis had virtually no amateur experience. But he's trained to be a really good pro fighter, and I think that's the difference. And I think the same here. Fabio Wardley is a very good athlete that's trained himself to be a good pro versus Fraser Clark, who was a good amateur, but ultimately hasn't really transitioned his style to the pro game yet. And this may be the performance that he does it, but I personally think that he will struggle to believe in the game plan after four or five rounds where Wardley's winning quite comfortably. And that's where we'll start to see Clark open up, start to make some mistakes and start to have some success, but it leads to more mistakes and the, and the opportunity kind of looms for... Wardley and as we get into the second half of the fight I think he'll just start to light him up I think it'll be a case where the fight gets stopped where he's just accumulated too much damage or it goes on to a points decision but either way I see Fabio Wardley winning in the second half of the fight or going to a points decision let me know your thoughts down below guys make sure to comment your prediction like the video and I'll catch you next time